So, I kind of want to talk about economy of paint today, or maybe not so much economy of paint as economy of brush strokes. And when I say economy of paint or economy of brush strokes, I mean very, being very prudent about what you put on on the surface. I know I have to be. Um, although I appreciate people who can put mark after mark after mark down and it comes down looking perfect and clean, it doesn't work out that way for me. The more marks I put down, the more muddy it gets, the more confused my mind gets, especially in the beginning. In the beginning, I've got to be very economic about what I put on the, on the surface. If I start laying things on too thick or getting into too much detail, especially in the beginning, when I get to the end, I've got this big muddy mess that I don't know what to do with. Even if it hasn't dried in a muddy, muddy mess, what I mean is colors mixing together and making that icky blech, colors, um, because I've you know been working in wet paint. If even if that hasn't happened, for me a muddy mess can be just too many things, too much noise, too many colors, too many brush strokes going on, especially at the beginning. It gets very confusing. When I first started painting <coughs> and first started drawing, um, I used to think, I'd get stuck on this one thing, and I'd think, I have to make this one particular thing perfect or I'm never going to get the rest of the, the painting or the drawing or the etching or the print or whatever I was working on to come out correctly. And that was really wrong-headed. But no one ever said, it's okay to ignore this one little thing that isn't right. Think about the whole. In, when I was growing up, I was taught that you have to get it right, you have to get the whole thing right the first time. And it's taken me most of my life to learn it's okay. The world isn't going to end if this one little thing isn't perfect. So you can actually look at the whole picture and get the whole picture to work and to be balanced rather than work on this tiny little thing and make yourself crazy over it. So here I am with this painting I've been making myself crazy over, this little, this little painting. And I actually got into making a muddied mess for myself by last Friday. So I wiped it down and I started all over again. Now the, the reference material for this piece says there has to be a lot of lights and darks and there has to be shadows and there has to be has to be's. Well, one of the rules in painting is that there are no rules. There does not have to be a hundred marks there on that painting. At least for me, there does not have to be an exactness. There does not have to be sharp, you know, light and sun rays and, and beams and little fur bits sticking out of her hat. It's okay. I can't do that yet. I can't worry about that yet. What I have to worry about is the overall painting and finding the balance in the overall painting. So I've gone through making the background black, making it translucent uh, earth red, uh, earth, translucent earth red, using gambling paints, translucent earth red and neo McGill, which is still down there, still on there. But I've also gone through red and a really bright purple and then a dark purple. Wiped it all down, and I really stayed with the translucent Gamblin Paints translucent translucent earth red, and a mixture of two different types of violet. I think a manganese. Um, yeah, if anybody can read that, that's one of the purples that I've used. Uh, a manganese, I believe, and then where are my glasses? Ah. A, a Utrecht Violet, Quina, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, it's Q-U-I-N-A-C-R-I-D-O-N-E Violet. All I know is, I like it, I buy it. You can hear the heat coming on, we're also in the middle of a rainstorm. So it's a little noisy in here, it's about to get worse. But um, 
Anyway, I've decided to stick with those two violets, those two purples, add a little bit of white, and fill in the background that way, as opposed to doing, e doing each little ray of sunshine. Wait a minute. There, my little heater, the heater was about to come on and make a lot of noise. But as opposed to doing each little, each little drop of light hitting it. I may decide to do that later, but I don't have to do that now. I don't have to focus on what's lacking in my picture to make it exact right now. So it's an economy of ideas, an economy of paint, an economy of brush strokes, especially to start. There is no way I'm going to be producing this right now. And there are a number of artists I know from Cape Cod who could do this right off the bat. In, well, starting with thin layers and building and building and building. And I'll go over them in another video because there's some brilliant people I know who are far better painters than I am in more realist sense. But they use different paints, like egg tempera. Uh, they use different types of oils than I use in different ways. And I'll talk about them in another video. But I do want to bring up someone that's been very important to me in my painting. And he doesn't even know it. I've never met him. But a Cape Cod artist named Dan Joy. He was a sign artist on the Cape. And I think he's living in Boston now. But he was a sign artist on Cape Cod and in this one little town called Orleans. Now, Cape Cod is shaped like this. It's shaped like an arm. And there's a little bit that sticks out here called Monomoy, and there's a bit that sticks out here called Falmouth. Well, Orleans, where Dan is, was, is right here on the elbow. And this one little town was packed with Dan Joy signs, and I think it still is. And my favorite restaurant, which just got bought by some real turdball people, um, called the Atrium, and underneath was another restaurant that I used to go to, was filled with Dan Joy artwork. His artwork was sumptuous. It, his, he did, I just, I can't tell you how much he affected me. His shadowing was perfect without being heavy-handed. His lights were, were perfect without being heavy-handed. Everything about his work was heavy-handed. Everything about his work was perfect, not heavy-handed. He did work for E. Mac and Bolio, so that's when I first saw his stuff, was in the 80s in Boston in an E. Mac and Bolio. And I walked in the door, and if you don't know E. Mac and Bolio, they're an ice cream company. Um, I don't know where they are beyond Massachusetts, but I walked into this ice cream shop on Newbury Street, in 1981, July in 1981, and looked up and I saw the most beautiful sign I had ever seen. Had the uh, listing of the flavors and, you know, the toppings and stuff, and that's when they were mixing. It was really hot to mix stuff in. That's when it just started. And I just stood there staring. The lettering was gorgeous. But the illustrations, above all, were absolutely Stunning. His waffle, he did these waffle cones that had lights and darks, and you could feel the texture in them. They were, but they were lighthearted. They weren't serious. They weren't, this is a waffle. It, they were just fun. Fun and nice and beautiful and colorful, but he did this beautiful shading using blues. He did all these things that I didn't know how to do. And after E. Mac and Bolios of Boston, I went back to Cape Cod, where I was from, and I started to see the signs everywhere. I, they're, uh, they're, they're just everywhere for almost every business. They were for a long time anyway. And I learned how to paint by looking at his signs. And one of my dreams has been to own a Dan Joy sign. Oh my God. I don't really even know where he is. I don't know if he does it anymore. But that man helped me to learn how to paint and how to work with color. Dan Joy. He taught me, through, through not exchanging a word, he taught me economy of paint, economy of brush strokes, 
economy of notation in your painting. He gave me a lot of courage and he doesn't even know it. He gave me the courage to use purple instead of blacks and browns in my background. How amazing is that? Someone I've never met. So there we are, and I really have to get back to work because it's going to get cold in here if I don't turn that heat on. So, economy. Ciao.